Hello YouTube and thank you for joining me on my channel today. Let's look at making an EDC, also known as the Everyday Carry Knife. This is a great first time project if you are new to knife making, with a super practical carry knife as end result. So let's get right into it. We start by marking the template onto the steel. I use a sharpened stainless steel rod as a scribe to mark the cut lines on the metal. The mill scale is still present and you can remove this first if you want to, but in my case I will grind it off later. Proceed to cut out the profile and grind it to its final shape. Use a half round file to file out the finger choil. Then cut a starting notch in the blade where the sharpening choil will be. File in the sharpening choil with a round file, but only about a quarter of the depth you need it. We will ground it out after heat treatment with a round grinding stone. I'll grind off the mill scale and flatten the profile out on a piece of 150 grit sandpaper stuck to a piece of glass to ensure that it's perfectly flat. Another easy way to remove mill scale is to leave the blade in vinegar overnight. Vinegar dissolves the scale and you simply wipe it off the next day. Mark the pinhole positions as well as the bevel areas and center lines. Drill the pinholes to the desired size, then proceed to drill extra holes in the handle area. This takes off some of the weight and allows the epoxy to seep through to the other side to create pillars which increases the bonding strength.
I prefer to countersink all the holes slightly to remove the burrs and to reduce the weight somewhat more. Make use of a file clamp and a round file to file in the plunge lines. The file clamp will ensure straight and even plunge lines on both sides of the profile, while the round file will give you a nice rounded plunge line that looks neat and is easy to sand clean after heat treatment. With the plunge lines now established, I use a 36 grit rough belt to remove as much metal as I can, then proceed to the hand file jig to finish the bevels. Hand filing gives me more accurate results, which is why I prefer to finish on the hand files. Draw file the bevels to ensure that you finish up with a flat, clean and smooth surface. Jimping is a term used to refer to the notches down the spine of a blade created to provide grip on a knife beyond the bolster. It also adds some aesthetic value to the knife. I establish the position of each individual notch with a small triangular jeweler's file. Then file it in with a small round file. You can use your own discretion here and play around with various shapes and patterns. Sand the blade with 150 grit sandpaper to remove all the heavy scratches. I choose to do this before heat treatment as it's easier to remove scratches while the metal is still in a soft state. Once hardened, hand sanding becomes a tedious process.
fire up the forge and preheat your quench oil. I prefer to preheat the oil to lower the viscosity of the liquid somewhat. Heat up two pieces of scrap metal and dunk it in your quench oil. Normalize your blade first by heating it up to critical temperature and letting it air cool. Critical temperature can be tested on a magnet. If the blade does not stick to a magnet, then it's hot enough. Repeat this process three times, each time heating the blade slightly less than the previous time. This will help to relieve the stresses that might have built up in the metal and reduces the chances of warping. After it's cooled off the third time, heat it up to critical temperature again and quench. Sand off the scale that formed during quenching and temper twice for two hours at 180 degrees Celsius. Connect a small stone drum sanding barrel in the drill press to grind in the sharpening choil to its desired depth. You can also use a rotary tool if you do not have access to a drill press. Sand the blade clean. You can go up to any grit you feel like, but in this case, I will only go up to 600 grit. For the handles, I will be using G10 in black and white with 3mm stainless steel pins. I prefer to mark the left and right side of the scales to avoid confusion when drilling holes and fitting the scales. Bevel the pins slightly. Pins with sharp edges will carve the pin holes in the scales bigger as you test fit, and you want to avoid your pins being too loose. I use a drop of super glue to secure the scales onto the profile to avoid unnecessary movement while drilling the pinholes. A light tap should loosen it up again.
Mark the outside profile onto the scale. Then grind off the excess material, but leave about 5 mm. This will be removed after the scales are epoxied and pinned. Drill extra holes in the handles inside the area you just marked, about a quarter of the way in. This will provide a better gripping surface for the epoxy. Taper the scales to your desired shape. In this case, I'm doing a simple taper, thicker in the middle, running down to a thinner front and end section. Before we fit the handle, it is always a good idea to cover the blade to protect it against scratches. Nothing is more annoying than gluing everything up and then having to remove scratches in tough to reach areas. Roughen up the scales with some 150 grit sandpaper and clean everything thoroughly with acetone. Mix 
Mix the epoxy according to the manufacturer's instructions and assemble the knife. Clamp everything up tightly and clean out the seeping epoxy from those hard to reach areas with a cotton bud soaked in acetone. You want to avoid trying to clean off those areas once the epoxy is cured. Allow the epoxy to cure, then proceed to clean up the scales. Clean the pins and sand the handles to the desired finish. Use a rotary tool with a small drum sander to clean out the finger choil and to grind in the texture into the scales. Once again, you can decide whether you want to add a texture or not, but with the black and white contrast in the pattern, it's hard to resist. Finish off the scales and the blade to its final shape and finish.
Buff the blade to a shine and sharpen. And our knife is finished. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful journey of knife making. I hope you find this tutorial useful and helps you to improve your knife making skills. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.